over the world all the time. And I'm all of a sudden I just said, why are they there? And why is other people there? Why are people in different spots on their lean journey? Started thinking about that. So welcome. Good morning, everyone. Got a lot of great people here. And uh, we've been very fortunate. We've had people, I'll let you turn that down a little. Look at all the countries got represented here. Think about the effort that's gone into everyone coming here. This is pretty amazing, right? People from all over the world have got on planes, spent money, time away from their company to come here and learn. So with all this effort, you would think we, we have to make a big impact. Would you agree? I mean, this is not, not a little impact, a big impact. And I'm going to tell you, it's not big enough to impact your company. It is not. Okay. You have to think way beyond that. So who's in this room? Some of the top leaders in the world, without a doubt. You know, we've got some pretty uh, incredible people here. I know most of you. And the concept of this talk is one three thirty. It's kind of a weird talk, isn't it? Kind of a weird concept. So here's what I was thinking. There are some people that when they learn about lean, they just boom, it's it. Ryan would be a good example, right? You watch the videos. You said, that's it. I went to Japan. I saw what Lexus was doing. I said, that's it. It's not, it's not even negotiable. There is no way in the world that I'm not going to do this at the highest level. In this room, there are some ones. You're not better than anyone else. It has nothing to do with that. I'm going to explain. And then there are the threes. Those people hear it. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Let me hear a little more. A little more. I think I'm going to do this. And then there are the 30s. Hmm, well, you know, God, it's good, it's good. But I got this over here, and I'm distracted over here, and I got this product development over here. And gosh, you know, I've got to deal with this at home. And, and yeah, it's good. But I'm not like, why I'm into the deep end. Who are these people? Why? That's the question I'm trying to answer. Who are these people, the one, threes, and 30s? So I thought about who are the ones. I don't know if I'm right on any of this. I'm just telling you what I'm thinking. I'm just musing out loud. So this is Aiden. He runs the biggest construction company in Kazakhstan. 8,000 employees. Nine years ago, he invited me to come to Kazakhstan to speak to his executive team. And for eight hours, I stood on a stage like this with 100 top leaders from, from the company. And I spoke. And Aiden came up on stage afterwards, and he goes, stop, 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 stop. He looked out at his 100 people, he says, we're going to do this. Period. We're going to do this. Why? Why did Aiden do this? He has 8,000 employees. Never. Who's going to take and move a company with 8,000? You know, think about the logistics. Think about the, the systems, the processes, everything that's involved in his company. We are dealing with nothing. Collectively in this room, we are dealing with nothing compared to what he's dealing with. And he says, we're doing it. Why? What kind of a man is that? Okay. So. I started thinking out loud. He's fearless. He embraces change. He's a life learner. He's skilled. Lots of deep life experiences, and he has mentors. Those were the six characteristics that I thought Aiden had with, that were unequivocal, and that many of you in this room have. Alex Ramirez would be one. Ryan would be another one. There are many more in this room. Fearless. Hey, change is good. It's not like a pain in the back, but it's good. Life learner, always reading. So I, I originally put up here educated. You know, I went to school, but it's not that because it's not, I was a poor student in school. It's not about if you're reading, are you watching? Jack, Jack said, well, I don't really read, but I'm constantly watching YouTube videos, constantly trying to figure out how to do stuff. Not stupid YouTube videos, but videos that are developing him and making him think. So life learner, 
and skilled. This is an interesting point right here. I've noticed that the people who struggle with this, who are in the three or the 30, do not have the skill to actually take a screw gun and put a screw in, cut a board, put a wire together, do some electrical, do some plumbing. They don't have basic skills. And so there's their fear. They're, they're afraid of doing this. They don't know how to do it. So it's difficult. And lean is so much about action and about gemba and about doing work. So they lack the skills. And they, they, a lot of these people are not really well traveled. You know, they haven't, they haven't traveled a lot. They haven't been exposed to a lot of people. The best example I can give you of that is we just went to uh, Kazakhstan with six top leaders from Japan. And they didn't, some of them have not traveled a lot. And these people were top, top leaders. I told you, biggest bridge builders, just incredible people. And they said to me, our lives are changed. We had no idea this part of the world, what was going on. We had no idea. And their whole mind just opened up. And they're changed people. They literally wrote, we are changed people. This experience, going around the world, seeing what's going on, it's very, very important. I told you what we do at our company. I mean, Lucas has been all over the world. I've taken him everywhere. I've taken many of my people all over the world to expose them, to develop them. And then mentors, very big. Aiden has mentors. Everyone's driving him and pushing him, Iron Man and, and this. He's always being mentored by people who are above him that are just pushing him and just saying, it's not enough. These characteristics. And you say, but why does that matter, Paul? I'll explain. I'll explain. So, you know, fearless, embracing change, you know. I did a little funny thing so you can remember it. Reading all the time, some skill, deep experiences, and mentors. Okay, you know, kind of a fun little picture. This is the little kid. Are you the little kid that's on the one wheel? I'm doing a one wheel. I'm 64 years old and I ride a one wheel and I surf and I kite surf and I foil. I, I always pushing the envelope, always push, pushing the envelope, but not to the point of endangering myself. I'm careful about that. So I'm, I'm, I'm careful. But it's very important here. I have so many mentors, Mr. Amazawa, Mr. Umar Muraj, Bob Taylor. I could just go on and on and on. The people who are above me that are developing me. This gives me the courage and I'm fearless. But then we have the threes. They have some fear. You know, they're afraid. You know, okay with change. They don't love change. They're okay with change. Some education. They've read a book a year, maybe. Maybe a book every five years they're reading. But they're not reading. I'm reading every day. Every day I'm digesting amazing books. I just read Bibi, ben, Benjamin Netanyahu. I'm now on, on Lessons from History. I just finished Elon Musk's book eight times going through. I could just go through a list of books that I've read just recently. Nonstop. Nonstop. All the time. But very little education. Occasionally read some books. They haven't traveled a lot. You know, these people generally have not traveled a lot. It's no, no fault of theirs, but there's a deficiency. They have some skills, you know, oh, maybe they could do, maybe they could pick up a screw gun and put a screw in, but it's not like they're bailiwick. It's not what they're really strong at doing. Okay. And then mentors, oh, there might've been one person, their grandfather was helping them at some point, but not, it isn't the main thing of what they do. They don't seek out advice. I know Ryan's told stories that you told stories where you knew people in Ireland and you called them up and they were top leaders and said, I want to meet with you. And the three brothers went and met with them, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is like, get it, right? Are you getting it? Do you have a mentor? Are you after a mentor? These people are not. No problem. I'm going to explain. I'm going somewhere with this whole thing. You'll see. Okay, this girl... When she, did, uh, when she did her changes, she, she started doing some changes, but she had some fear, but she started doing pretty well. And the more, more improvements she made, the better. And then we have the characteristics of the 30. These people have lots of fear. They're afraid of getting whacked. They avoid change because it's a lot of work. Uh, they probably never read a book in their life. And uh, very few experiences. They're living in their little world. They go to the store, get a beer at night, whatever they're doing. Minimal skills, maybe just the skills they have to do to get by every day, but not a lot. And they definitely do not have a mentor. And I engage these people every day. So these people contact me. God, I, I, I saw your book. I thought it's incredible, but I don't know what to do. 
You don't know what to do. It laid it out in the book, clear, crystal clear. How could you not know what to do, right? They're paralyzed. They don't have any experience. They don't have any basis to go on. So why does this matter? Because you need to know your people. You need to know where your people are. I think once you understand these characteristics and you can identify the deficiencies that a particular individual might have that has a good attitude, that has the potential to go somewhere, but they lack all these things. Adam talked about mentorship, that if you start developing their skills, you start actually go side by side, show them how to use a screw gun, show them how to use a table saw, show them how to wire an electrical. I'll never forget the story with Bob Taylor. I, was, I told you a story about Bob Taylor. He mentored me. Everyone had gone home. We were hooking up a new sander. And it was 220 power. I didn't know 220 power. And Bob goes, okay, let's hook this up. And he's taking everything apart, wiring the box and doing it. I said, Bob, how did you learn this? He goes, oh, well, I just well, got in there and tried. And, you know, somebody taught me one thing and I learned another thing and I learned another thing. But there was Bob Taylor teaching me the skill to do electrical, right? I didn't have that skill. So you get in there and you start teaching them those skills. You identify the problems and you embrace it. Lucas would be a great example. Lucas was not really good at leading in the beginning. He was afraid of leading. He didn't want to confront people. He didn't want to get in people's face. I pulled him in the, I pulled him in the conference room a hundred times, a hundred times. Okay, Lucas, what's the problem? Okay, tell me the problem. Okay, I role play. This is what I'm going to do. Okay, Lucas, role play back to me. Da, 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 da. Okay, go out and do it, right? Back in. See what I'm saying? You need to teach these skills to your people, particularly if they have potential, right? This is a concept. We need to know where our people are. Are they a one, three, or 30? And if they're good people and they want to learn, if they're Liam's, if they're Stewart's, if they're Alex's, if they're Jake's, we need to develop them. Find out where the weakness is. Develop them with knowledge. Understand deeply what's going on here. What's my recipe? It's very simple. I look at these things and I develop systems that support the outcome. Who was it that said that profound quote last night? Come on, help me. Who was the one that said the indicator's norm? What was the quote? The indicator's... Get a microphone. Get a microphone for him. Turn it on. I, we got to hear this. Say it again. Uh, ideal, ideal results are preceded by ideal behavior. Okay. We want the results. We want these great leaders. But we have to develop these. So fear. Everyone leads the morning meeting in our company. I don't care who you are. You've never stood up in front of people before. I'll never forget leaders coming to my company and saying, Paul, your 18-year-old can lead meetings better than my executives in my company that has 1,000 employees. That didn't just happen. We made them overcome their fear. Change. We embrace change everywhere, everything we do. History, education, every day we have a history lesson. And then experiences, we, we, we expose our people to people from all over the world. We have people coming to our company from all over the world. And we take our people all over the world and we teach them the skills. Lucas tells a great story that a guy, you taught him pneumatics. What was it, uh, hydraulics or pneumatics? Go ahead. Okay, microphone. Uh, yeah, Brian. Stand up. Uh, Brian, he uh, recently became our production lead. And you know he's really artistic and into making things, but has no technical skills. No technical. And so taught him everything about solenoids, how to wire them, how to put together pneumatics, and actually teaching him a little bit of basic CNC now too. And Brian is awesome, posting videos almost every day on our website. All the improvements, he just blows me away. But we're developing those things. We're deliberately and intentionally developing those things, and we're mentoring as Adam said yesterday. We gotta do it. So, check this out, let's go to Kazakhstan. Who would have thought that when I, nine years ago, I'd meet Aiden?
These are the schools in Kazakhstan. Wow. Who would have thought we could have that big an impact? This is what fearless leadership looks like. That I am rebuilding the schools in Kazakhstan. 37,000 students. He has built schools for 37,000 students based on what he's seen in Japan. Do you understand the impact we can have? We gotta get this right. We gotta see the deficits in our people help and develop them, mentor them. And we need to go way beyond the walls of our companies. We need to change our culture and our society and our countries. Mommy Han said it, I'm trying to tie it all together. Are you team Australia, team New Zealand? Someone here said they're, they're asking schools to come. That's the starting point of the tours. No excuses anymore. You were invited here to make a difference in the world. Let's do it, okay? Thank you.